any man can satisfy a woman for a night. It take a special man to satisfy a woman for a lifetime. What is a man? I don't think that's the right question we should be asking. That's a different question that needs to be asked. Well, let's talk the pressure of manhood today. <laughs> that's all we <laughs> Cause I'm in the building. <laughs> I'm just we are rocking here with not only the host of one of the dopest podcasts, The Basement with Tim Ross, but also Tim Ross's cousin, but honestly one of the greatest hip hop artists in the world. I'm gonna call him the greatest rapper that's a Christian. We here rocking with Lecrae, welcome to Harvard. Let's be real clear. You might hear that quite often. He's not a real man. The women are saying, I want a real man. It's like, what are you asking for? I want to actually bring some clarity to what that is. Now we're starting to look at who are the men we look up to. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, you go back 500 years, the idea of what a man is is completely different than what it is today. But dude, I remember when we bought our first house, after I paid like seven mortgage payments, I still didn't feel like no damn man. I'm so grateful you asked me. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> we are not supposed to do life alone. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about a connection to a woman. We're talking about a connection to... Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode with my co-host, Ryan Ketchens. My man is one take with that one, too. That was smooth. It is I know, know you're ready. I know you're ready now. The repetition, the consistency. And here consistent with me is another one of the hardly initiated favorites we got here. Oh, man, y'all y'all been asking for this brother to come back. Right. And this ain't for me. This is for y'all. <laughs> it's a 3 All right? <laughs> this is the 3 It's a 3 It is it's a 3 officially It is a 3 A 3 yeah, here, hardly initiated. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We are rocking here with not only the host of one of the dopest podcasts, mm -hmm. The Basement, with Tim Ross, but also Pastor Ross. I like you still my pastor. <laughs> I appreciate it. You still my pastor. It, Welcome, Tim Ross, to Holly. I'm, gra I'm grateful to be here with y'all again, man. It means a lot. Absolutely. Good. Yeah, Three Peters dope. Three Peters dope. Three Peters dope. Absolutely. And, and this, this is still not the last. Right? No, for and, sure. And Tim is connected too. So Tim called in a favor for us, which is much appreciated. Yes. Absolutely. He got us one of the. And you know, it's so funny because when I first started to change the way I started thinking about things and consider things differently. Mm -hmm. I used to be on Tyshawn head like, yo, you really got to listen to this right here. Yeah, he, he was. And um, I'll, 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 let you do, I'll let you do the intro. No, I mean, it's really no introduction. I mean, we rocking here not only with Tim Ross's cousin, but honestly, one of the greatest hip hop artists in the world. I agree. Right? That's fact. That's I mean, big fact. The, 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 the that, that ain't no cap. Fact. The yeah. accolades that ain't no cap. prove itself. Ain't it, ain't it a Grammy hanging on the wall somewhere? It's, it's a couple of them. Oh, it's just hey, a, it's yeah, just yeah, a yeah. few. I'm, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I know, I know. He don't like being called a, a Christian rapper. I mean, I'm a Christian. But what I'm the, a rapper. You, you're a Christian. You're a rapper. I'm both. Of them. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him the greatest uh, rapper that's a Christian. Okay, <laughs> right. that's a good one. Uh, in the space. Let me go ahead and just go ahead and put yeah. you on. We here rocking with Lecrae. Welcome to Harley Initiated. Cause I'm in the building. Back. Back. AKA oh, Tim, just Tim's cousin. No. That's all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tim brought his cousin with him this time. Yeah. Yeah. Tim brought the cousin in here. And listen, we that's needed we, we needed that because you know we always uh. warm the guests up with a little conversation before the show. Mm -hmm. And what they didn't even know is they was warming up for the conversation we had prepared for oh, you all snap. today. Oh, you you sound yeah. like you ready to just dive into the deep end of the pool. Uh, that's what we like All the pleasantries do. out of the way. You yeah, like, yeah, you like, yeah. we no want to dive into the deep end no of the pool. No Jesus meat. <laughs> yeah. All meat. Uh, and we got today. the men. Protein the men. shakes. The men, Tim, the men is like, yo, listen, the reason I started watching this show is because it's a safe space for men. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They want more conversation specifically for men. So we say, well, look, we're going to bring two of the strongest men that we know. Yep. Or we want to get to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Right? And we're going to talk some real talk. And we're going to talk, it, bro. Talk. Let's talk the pressure of manhood today. Let's get okay? it. Okay. Sure. Because one thing I know in this space that I hear a lot, and I don't know, y'all can tell me if y'all hear this too. You can hear women say this quite often of, I want me a real man. Mm. or he's not a mm. real man. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah. hear that quite often. Mm. I want to actually bring some clarity to what that is, because I think even, I mean, one of the pressures of, you know, just being a man is living up to the pressures of women in society in general. And I don't know if that definition has changed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's still the same, mm -hmm. but let's kind of demystify what mm. the real man mm. is here today. Mm -hmm. Pastor Ross, what you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you talking I need about, Pastor Ross on that yeah, one. You need meat. You talking about throwing meat in the middle of the table 
I think I think first of all, the definition is not clear. I don't believe I could kind of stencil stamp what a man is. Mm. I know the ingredients it takes for a man to be whole, for a man to be grounded, for a man to be successful. I know what those ingredients are, but the expressions of a man, they, 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 there's, there's so much nuance. And every time we try to say, this is a man, you are, you are literally not bringing in the scope of the expressions of all men. Mm. Give you a perfect example. Uh, the, you know, I, get, I, get, I, I, I would get called to preach at a lot of men's conferences, right? And I've been to men's conferences where like they had a boxing ring in the middle of the church. Man, we're going to do man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you got two dudes that love Jesus mm. that don't know each other, but signed up for a man's conference, punching each other in the face. Like, I'm not getting closer to God at that point, right? Because <laughs> right. the moment you catch me on the chin, dog, I'm seeing red, and then I got to stomp you, and then it ain't going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Then if I take an L in front of all these other men, then I'm sitting at the back of the conference when I paid to sit in the front. Like, like all this stuff is going down, right? Um, I've been at uh, men's conferences where, like, we have axe throwing outside, and uh, we're doing log chopping, and <laughs> we got guns for you to look at. And we got three NASCAR, and, and you're just sitting there like, I don't have no calluses on my hands. Mm. Like, all my work is done from the neck up. I am a thinker. I get paid to think. Mm. People think they pay me to talk. They actually pay me to think before I talk. So, so I'm not, uh, the, the, the scope of a man is very, very wide. And to just say, this is a man has just caused all men to not feel like, any of them measure up. Huh. Mm. I know big grown men that are accomplished in, in sports at the height of it, and they don't feel like a man. Uh -huh. I know mm. men, men, men working at UPS, they don't feel like a man. Uh -huh. I know multimillionaires that don't feel like men. <laughs> I know broke men that don't feel like men. So it's not like if I get this level of success, it's like, no, what, is, what are the ingredients that make a man grounded, uh -huh. successful, at peace, not angry that's a different question that needs to be asked okay what mm -hmm. is a man i don't think that's the right question we should be asking hmm. the ingredients yeah so it's a recipe i think it's a recipe to manhood to manhood yeah i i i i think it's interesting because if women are asking if women are saying i want a real man it's like what are you asking for exactly you know what i'm saying because because throughout time it's a moving target of what mm. that looks like mm. if you go back 500 years the idea of what a man is is completely different than what it is today for sure so i think there's a cultural moving target now i this is my my perspective my personal perspective is there's a difference between a male and a man if we're talking about from a a desirable like cultural perspective i think a male has genitalia, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Male parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you come out the womb, they put you in the category. Right, right. Male. Yeah, yeah. A man, what, what, you know, what would be the distinction of the delineation between a man and a boy is that there are some expectations culturally. But here's the crazy part about it. The reason why I feel like, specifically like in America, we struggle with this whole concept is because Americans are literally one of the only cultures that do not have a rite of passage for men. Mm. When you go to Kenya, the mm -hmm. Maasai warriors, mm -hmm. they got to they gotta go out and hunt a lion. Yep. And when they come back, you're a man. It's yep. a rite of passage. Yep. You go to other different cultures, there's a, there's a, 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 there's a, a, a some kind of process by which you become a man. Yep where the, even the men know the distinction. So we're living in a world of what I call adult lessons where we're forever boys because mm. we never knew when we were supposed to be a man. Mm. When are we supposed to be? And what, what I would say the some of those ingredients are are the ingredients that benefit society as a whole. That's are right. you passive? That's right. not that's not helpful for society. So that's reject right. passivity. Yeah. Are you responsible? Yep. That's helpful for society. That's so right. be responsible. Yep. Are you... Uh, uh, psh, are you, do you invest in other people? That's yep. helpful for society. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So um, do you, 
you know what I mean? Those are just some some of those like ingredients he's talking about. And yeah. I'm like, if you don't possess those ingredients, then maybe you're still living in a realm of boyhood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you a responsible individual? Are you a passive individual? Or or do you reject that passivity? Do you invest in other people? Like, are you just looking at how you can build your own ego and be selfish? Because that's what kids do. That's right. right. That's what little boys yeah, do. Yeah, for sure. So I think that target is going to look different depending on what time period you're in. Mm. But being selfless and being responsible, they may not flesh themselves out in 2023 the same way they flesh themselves out in 1853. Right, right, right. But the, right, right. the concept is still yeah, the same. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? The concept's yeah. still the same. Yeah, but Craig, what absolutely. you said, it hit so hard because that all comes with the ideation of when we created the platform. Yep. Mm, because yep. we understood that through study, there was no rite of passage. We understood there was no mm. initiation process, which is why most men are hardly initiated. Literally, yeah. how all this That's happened like, here today. I, I remember I called Ty. I think I was reading uh, what's Jack Donovan's book, and it talked about <laughs> the way of men. It, yeah, the way of men, and it talked about you know, and that ten to twelve year old mark is when um, you know other cultures outside of Western civilization they have this initiation process for which men now or young boys become men, and it's official. Yeah, absolutely. There's a yep. certain way that they operate. Yeah. Yep. And I remember being so excited. I called Ty Sean. I'm like, yo, we you know this initiation process. People not initiated. Right. We need to call it. Hardly initiated. Wow. Oh, Which is great. Yeah. I didn't even know that. That's how I yeah. came. Yeah. That is now, that. it's an evolved sense for which we, you know, provide an information course for, for both women and men. For sure. Yeah. But I think that initiation process is, is very important. So before we talk about the specific ingredients, yeah. if, you know, you are a person that has, you know, a man specifically that's come to the realization yep. that you have not quite been initiated, right. where should you go to find the information that you need or to, to, uh, to find the the process that you need to kind of take that next step. Mm. Well, I mean, there's so many programs now for men to be initiated. Mm. And let's be real clear. Men are being initiated all the time. That's facts. Mm. That's facts. Just because you haven't been initiated into what it means to be a man you get doesn't initiated. mean you have not been initiated to somebody's definition of man manhood right so w we've been initiated through sex yeah through drugs through gangs gangs through we've been initiated all other types of ways frats frats, yeah. <laughs> frats is an yeah. initiation you know what it i'm is. saying facts um um sometimes a title in a church is an, an initiation mm -hmm. right some people know church more than they know jesus Y'all didn't hear that. Ooh. So, so there's all these initiations going on. If we back it all the way up, though, and we say, well, well, what is the proper thing to be initiated in? Now we're starting to look at who are the men we look up to, mm -hmm. and do they have programs yeah. or do they have ways to connect by which I can learn what they know? Yeah. By which I can get in me what's been put in them mm -hmm. and through there that's when you start seeing men grow my my sons uh you know uh as a believer in jesus christ i understand i understood from the first time i picked up the bible that i was a gentile that this was a book that was written to a different group of people um uh that i was far from and that i've been engrafted into this particular uh faith so we didn't grow up with no bar mitzvahs Mm, the right of right. the the that's right of right. passage that yeah. when you turn 13 you are now a man that's right right and so my son was 12 turning 13 i have a lot of friends that are jewish and i thought to myself he needs to know that at 13 he's a man did the black mitzvah not no. <laughs> <laughs> hey we need that if i yeah. if i was more clever that's exactly what it would have been called <laughs> You've told me just in time for my son's 13, <laughs> which is coming, which is coming in October. I wish I had that two years ago. So when Nathan, when Nathan turned 13, we did a Gentile bar mitzvah for him. Mm. And I had a rite of passage for him mm. to let him know and be aware in front of all of his family and friends that you are no longer a boy. Mm. You have just reached the earliest phase of manhood mm -hmm. and responsibility is going to be different for you now. The way I look at you and what I expect out of you is going to be different. Than, than when you were 12 years old, because you are now a man. Yeah, You're a very young man, but yeah. you're a man right now. Not at 18, not at 21, not at 25, not at 30. Not when you get a house, not when you get a spouse. 
Yeah. Not when you graduate college. You are a man now, and I have different expectations out of a man than I do a boy. I wonder, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti that, but I wonder, like, because you know, back then they was putting them out the house young too. Nah, yeah, I'm, I ain't trying to do all that. So I'm just wondering if, like, if, like, if, the, if, like, nowadays, if I say you're a man but you still live under my roof, do you feel emasculated? But that's a whole other question. I'm just like, dang. I, I wouldn't think. I don't. I wouldn't think a 13 year old would think about it. Would like think that. about true. it like that. That's true. A, a 17, 18 year old. Yeah, might. yeah, yeah. But yeah. then at that time, for 17 and 18 year olds, for 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 men that are raising sons, yeah. 17, 18 years old, right when you get around there. You stop being um, the commander, yeah, and you start being the coach. That's right. That's right. That's good. Right. You, yeah. Zero through about 13, 14, Do what You're I the say. commander. Yeah, that's mm. facts. What? Do this. Why, Daddy? Because I said so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which I always give my sons fuller answers, but I'm just saying you're in that commander mode, right? Yeah. Clean your room. Do your chores. Wash the dishes. Mm. Go to bed. Right. Yeah. S 16, 17, 18, 19. You're now coaching. Hey, Amen. That's good. You falling off right there. Like you didn't run that route the way you were supposed to, bro. Don't, don't talk to my wife like that. I don't, I don't think I felt like I didn't have a rite of passage. I didn't have a line, mm -hmm. but I did in my mind. Mm -hmm. And in both the two things I had in my brain were so warped. It's crazy to even talk about them. Now, the first thing I had in my mind was sex. Yep. As soon mm -hmm. as I have sex, I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That was the first thing that I had. I mean, it was warped. Yep. But yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. You, yeah. When I put this in there. Yep. When I come out. Yep. I am a man. Wow. You know, because I could talk to my boys about it. I, da, 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 da. Got you. Got you. Got you. The second thing, which is warped as well, was when I went to prison. If I go to prison, now I'm a man, because that's what the men in my family did. Wow. They went to prison. So I literally have had this reoccurring thought in my mind: I did not become a full man. Cause I never went to prison, so I, I'm in therapy today, so it's all good. But uh, right, right. I, thought, <laughs> I thought it was gonna go to to, to money because I and I and I want to oh, I want to ask this. That's good. That's interesting. I want to ask this because is it not as simple with a recipe? Is it not as simple as a man being the provider, the yeah. protector, and the priest of his household? Is that not still the recipe of what it is to be a man? That's not the recipe. I think I think those incorporate some of the things we're talking about, but they those, just try. Those are outcomes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, outcomes. those are outcomes. Those, those are subsequent realities to somebody that yeah. has the right ingredients. That's good. But dude, I remember when we bought our first house, it was $180,000. We picked the tile that went on the floor, we, we, we saw the thing go up from like when they poured the concrete, the lot, the concrete. Y'all was they doing put, good. Y'all was doing good. They put, <laughs> up the, they put up the wood. I remember we wrote scriptures on all of the wood. Mm. Uh, uh, the wood frame over, the, over our bedroom, I put every sex scripture I could find. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all this is happening in this room in Jesus' name. Right? Like, like, like I, I just wrote it all down, right? And then I just... I remember after I paid like seven mortgage payments, mm -hmm. I still didn't feel like no damn man. Mm. I'm like, I done got the wife. I got the house. I got we the got the neighborhood. Like I've checked all the boxes. Headboards rocking. Yeah. Still ain't a man. And I'm like, this can't be, like I thought this was the American dream. Well, what happens when the dream is realized? Mm. Well, if you don't know how to be fulfilled in that, it's depression. Yeah. All psychological studies show that um, in the Olympics, the most depressed person is the gold medalist. That's facts. Wow. And I can speak to that. I done had the number one album in the country, won the Grammy in my category, and the, the other side of that is like, now what? Mm. And at what age did you do it? 32. Wow. Got the rest of your life. What if you live 50 more years, 60 more years? What are we, what, what are we doing with the rest of our life? Now you got to keep chasing it. Right? You got to be the number one every time. Right? Now you got to make mm -hmm. off the wall again. That, oh. What was that? That was Michael's, that was Michael's oh, whole deal, right? Gosh, yeah. So the gold medalist is the most depressed. The person that lives with the most regret is the silver medalist. Ooh. Because they was two milliseconds behind, the, behind gold. Mm. So they live the rest of their life with, damn. If Almost. Only. You know who the most could have been depressed. That's right. <laughs> I almost made it to depression. This is this is blowing my now mind. Now I just right live now. with regret, right? <laughs> Guess who the most 
content person is? The bronze. Bronze. Really? Bronze is like, at least I played. I got here. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> the bronze ain't even supposed to be here. The bronze, the, you wow. you watch in the Olympics. Watch the gold medalist. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Watch the bronze medalist in the Olympics. I'm not talking about like world championships because right. yeah, yeah, people yeah. can get faster. Olympics is the pinnacle, right? Mm. Yeah. You is. watch any bronze medalist in the in in in, in yeah. especially in like the track and field events. They are like. I made it. Right, 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 I'm right, a medalist. Right, right. I played because by the time you get to the Olympics, you already know Carl Lewis is gonna smoke me. That's true, yeah, right? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, you true. already know, you know that. Usain Bolt is gonna dust me. Like you know that's what I mean. Right, On my right. best day, I've never had Usain Bolt's laziest run. Right? You right, know what right, I mean. Right. On my right. best day. So place. you like, okay, I'm probably gonna get cooked by him. Maybe I can come in second. But but but, dude, if you wind up third, yeah. They're the happiest people to just get yeah. a medal. They wow. biting it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the gold medalist got to think about, damn. I did. Yeah. I, what's next? I, I spent my whole life getting this. I got it. I'm 24. Yep. And to your point, like, if you don't find contentment in like, hey, I have the ingredients of what it means to be a man, then you're always looking to like, hit that notch that thing that you feel like is gonna because if you think about it that's all we do in life yeah, like we right. say man just just wait till i get to fifth grade wait till i get to middle school right, then you right, get right. to middle school wait till i get to high school right then you get to high, wait till i graduate then you right. graduate wait till i wait till i get a married wait till i get a right. high, and it's like it never stops you, you never, never hit stop. your yeah yeah you're not thing. content yeah you know absolutely that so. bell is a it's like it's yeah. like being on the uh, uh american ninja obstacle course but there's no buzzer mm-hmm so I think all men eventually come to that point to where they finally reach the destination. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they get this, like you said, they're not happy. Yeah. Still not content. Yeah. yeah. So where is contentment derived from? Uh oh. How do you how do you get it? Ha 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 ha. I'm so grateful you asked. This <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the first ingredient to what it means to be a man. You have to be connected to your creator. Hmm. First ingredient. That's the first ingredient. You didn't make yourself. Facts. That's another thing society wants us to believe mm -hmm. is I pulled myself from my own boot, bootstraps. Yeah. I did this. Self-made. Nobody, nobody gave us nothing. We made us. Right? No. The truth of the matter is if you're not connected to the God that created you, you will never feel contentment. That's right. Because you will never feel complete. You got to remember in Genesis chapter number two, it was God that said of Adam, it is not good for man to be alone. Adam didn't say that. Mm. You know why? Adam was content. He was happy. He, he was wasn't looking for no woman. Naming monkeys. He was <laughs> naming animals. He wasn't like, anybody else got somebody? <laughs> God, why you got me down here? No, this dude was so happy connected to God yep. and his work that he wasn't looking for nothing else. It yeah. was God who said, it's not good for this man to be alone. God made that up. And it wasn't just a marital statement. It was a relational statement. We are not supposed to do life alone. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about a connection to a woman. We're talking about a connection to other men, mm -hmm. a bond that is unbreakable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, so, and so the first ingredient is we have to be connected to our God. From there, we have to have, what's the first thing? After, after Look, from the, from the dust, God blew into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. What's the very next thing he did? He placed him in the garden to work. work. Got to have something to do. You got to have something to do. Got to have something to do. A man needs work. Can't just retire and sit down. No, you got to work. You got to be building something. You're Absolutely. Gonna, you're going to be standing outside of Walmart if you... Absolutely. You're going to do something. And break down, break down the difference <laughs> between work and a job because your job... And your career might not necessarily be the work. No, absolutely correct, right? Yeah. I remember working at, um, when I was pursuing music, like, hard, I remember I, I worked at Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I got off work. I was in the studio by 7.30, and most times I wouldn't be out until 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Go home, catch some sleep, get up in the morning, back at work at 7. Yeah. The work, the, 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 the Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation, that was my job. My work is creativity. Mm -hmm. I live with words. And so if I can put them to music, cool. If I can just put them to pictures, cool. Whatever I can do around 
communication. That's what that's what I did. I did stand up comedy for two years. I preached. I podcast. Like everything, everything that generates money for me is around what I believe I was put on earth to do, which is speak, mm -hmm. communicate, draw pictures and illustrations for people. You take that away from me, I'm gonna be depressed. Yeah. But I don't actually need my value to be tied to it in terms of, well, I'm not in a job where I get to do what I love. Therefore, no, I went to Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation because I paid the bills. Yeah. And let me say, too, for anybody that may be watching that's like, I don't believe in a higher power, right? Like, so how can that be one of the first ingredients of manhood? My challenge to everybody who would say something like that would be, do you feel like you have purpose? Mm. Because if you just think you're a cosmic accident, if you just think you're a random occurrence of molecules and atoms, then you don't have purpose, mm. right? Like there's, there's no, no reason for you to be here. You're mm. just existing. Mm. So when he says, you know, be created to your, be connected to your creator, if you don't think you have a creator, then you don't have a purpose, mm. right? You, you're, you're nothing. You, you don't mean anything. Nothing matters. So why are you asking questions about what it means to be a man? Why are you trying mm. to define manhood? Mm. Because there's no, per nothing matters. Mm. If there's no creator, nothing matters. Mm. We're just accidents. Mm. Stop trying to live like you have purpose. Stop mm. trying to pursue a job, mm. a career, mm. money, women, mm. all of that mm. is pointless because nothing matters. Mm. But if it does matter, mm. and if you do feel like it matters, mm. it matters because someone has, per you don't just define purpose in and of itself. Purpose is defined. It's not achieved, it's received, mm. right? Like mm. when I make this bottle, this bottle has purpose because I made it with purpose, mm -hmm. right? Or whoever did make mm -hmm. it, made it with purpose. So mm. we're human beings made with purpose. So mm -hmm. as he's talking about creator, mm -hmm. like how are you ever going to know what you are if you keep denying the fact that you were created, that you're right. created yeah. so, you know, that's a that's a That's a very yeah. relevant message. That's beautiful. Yeah. And because I know somebody watching this was thinking that. And just so I can make sure I summarize it for them as well, yeah. you got recipe number one, can be connected to the creator. That's right. Two, get you some work. Yeah. And you got to have work. Is, is that, what, what, what else we got to use? How to yeah. cook, cook this man up? Yeah, so so... So that man has to be connected to his creator. That man has to have work. He has to have purpose. He has to have an assignment, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That assignment doesn't mean that uh, he's going to be a multimillionaire. That's uh, good. It doesn't mean he's going to be a CEO. It don't mean that he's going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and be able to take exact trips to Sandro Pay. <laughs> yeah. What it means is that he's going to be fulfilled. Ooh, that's better. That's even better. And fulfillment is better than success. Trust me. Mm. Trust me. Fulfillment is better than success. Trust me. David Kyrie Weber Chappelle, known as mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle. His told name his, is Kyrie Weber? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Kyrie Weber Chappelle <laughs> told his father, I want to be a stand-up comic. His father said, you're not going to make any money. His response was, as long as I make enough money to like get an apartment or whatever, I'll be cool. Wow. To which his father responded, then go be a comic. Mm. That's far. That's facts. If you got these visions of grandeur of like, I'm going to be the best comic since Richard Pryor, mm. since Bill Cosby, and I'll be the most famous person in the world. Don't do it. Because you won't be fulfilled. I, I got this question for you right here. Because I know it's actually probably some brothers watching this that's in a place of unfulfillment. Meaning they're either in a place of depression or headed yeah, 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 for to sure. depression. Whether yeah, they yeah. know it or not. Because I don't even yeah. know... if. Brothers don't even know when they're depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, like, brothers be walking around depressed and you yeah, ask yeah, 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 you yeah, depressed? Yeah. No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, straight. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what I want to know is, one, let's start here. Let's talk to a brother that's depressed with a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I think that's a very dangerous mm -hmm. place yeah, yeah, to yeah. be. For sure. To have the expectation to be right. a real man. Right, right, for sure. With mm -hmm. this woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you depressed. Right, right. It's the truth. So <laughs> what so do you true. do in that spot? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What do I need to do if I need to manage my family and a woman mm -hmm. and I'm knee deep in depression right now? Mm -hmm. mm. The first thing you need to do is acknowledge it. Anything that's in the darkness grows. Anything that's in the light shrinks. So the moment you flick on the lights and even say, I am depressed, you automatically start shrinking how big you actually thought 
whatever you feel bad about or depressed about actually is. And that's the one thing that most men don't do is actually just talk. I always make this statement in therapy that whatever doesn't come up and out of your mouth through words will come up and out of your body through actions. So if you can't put it in the words, it's going to come out in the action. You show, you show me a man that cheats on his wife, and I'll show you a man that can't articulate his dissatisfaction and unfulfillment in his own marital bed. Mm. Wow. You show me a man that punches his wife, any type of domestic violence, and I'll show you a man that cannot tell you he's angry or the deeper root, he's scared. Mm. Mm -hmm. he, can't, he can't say it. So he is physically expressing that. Does that mean he should even say it's his wife? Like, should a man even come out in depression me, and tell his wife that he's depressed? Let me tell you, I lived it. So I spent the better part of 2016 depressed. Like not, like there's a difference between like depressed, downtrodden. I was that, and then that led to a clinical depression. Like wow. where I wake up in the morning and all I see is gray skies. I'm driving a late model Benz S-Class, living in a million dollar house, and my days suck, right? I don't wanna live anymore. Like, every day I'm waking up thinking to myself, the only reason why I wanna keep living is because I don't want my kids to find my cold body mm. somewhere in this house. Mm. That type of depressed. Mm -hmm. And if I would've kept my mouth shut, my wife would've just, she wouldn't have been able to, one, become the partner and, and help her that God created her to be in my life, right? So if I would have not said anything, I'm robbing her of the opportunity to be who God created her to be. I'm robbing her of the opportunity to step in and demonstrate what love looks like. Because when you're going through something mentally or emotionally, when you're really in a genuine connected relationship, it's not just happening to you. It's happening to y'all. So for her, she's like, this affects all of us, so what? What do I need to do in the midst of this situation? And part of that was, man, her encouraging me to see therapy, her being my sounding board, her being like, when I, when I felt so down, I, I couldn't even get out the house. She was like, come on, we finna play Uno. Mm. She just gonna sit in the house with me because I'm too depressed to leave. She's mm. like, we just finna play Uno. She come home with puzzles. We just gonna do a puzzle. You ain't gotta go nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, wow. you don't communicate That's that, you not, you're not getting, you're robbing her the opportunity to be who she wants. Like, she signed up for better or worse. That's right. To death do us part. Yep. You robbed her of the chance yeah, good. to live that out. That's good. You man. know what I'm saying? So I, good, I got, I, I credit my wife for like, yeah, I went to therapy. Yeah, I got help and I'm better. But I credit 75% of that to my wife. Cause you, cause every therapist will say, do you have support outside of this? That's this right. That's right. And I was like, I, I got good friends, but I got her, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So don't keep your mouth shut. And if you ain't got no woman, if you do, if, if she's not your wife at the same time, if she, if, if, if y'all are dating with that type of intentionality, give her the opportunity to show. Right. Yeah. You what she made yeah, of. And yeah, it's like sure. she care about yeah, you. Yeah, so absolutely. don't rob her. Yeah, that. that's good, you know bro. I mean? You probably that's shouldn't good. be dating if you're depressed anyway, but yeah, what, for sure. you know what I would say though yeah. is, is That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> Please don't bring nobody else into that, brother. <laughs> that's right. true. Handle that. Yeah, get yourself together first. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Just, so get true. Get yourself together. I, I like I like the way you broke it down. I, as men one, I know when we even think of the word depression, sadness, any of that, that's just pure weakness. Mm-hmm. Like we categorize that in our mind mm -hmm. as absolute weakness. So mm -hmm. you saying to say it, first yeah. of all, is in many men's minds to claim weakness, mm. uh -huh. even though you're saying it's strength in that. That's yeah, there like is. most men will look at it as taking their power away. Yeah, exactly. Where yeah. you are claiming it is wielding your power. Absolutely. And it's, mm. it's, it's interesting because also men also don't want to communicate. We want to be strong all the time in front of our woman. That's yeah. right. So telling your woman that you're dealing with depression yeah. is one of the highest levels yeah, of yeah, how yeah. men will probably even perceive weakness because yeah, yeah. that's absolutely yeah, yeah, 100% sure. vulnerable that's right, exactly. at that point. But, I, but what it sounds like is if she don't respond properly, what it probably even should be looked at as a test because if she don't respond properly, then she probably not the right woman Right, is what it is. I that's mean, I, there's a level of maybe patience and grace you can have with people, but if they ultimately... 
refuse to walk with you through the darkest period of your life, I mean, I don't, I, that's, I don't know why they with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. life get, life is going to start life and just keep living like my grandma mm-hmm. said, keep living, mm-hmm. baby. Mm-hmm. Life is going to start getting difficult. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I love my wife because she wasn't with me when it was popping. She was with me when it wasn't. She was with me on the ugliest days, on the brightest day, like all of it. And I mean, if if somebody's not willing to ride or ride with you, and this goes for men too, like men, like, like you gotta be willing to stand by your woman and not just as this type of person who's like, I got it, mm-hmm. but stand by her and support her dreams and support like leading. And leadership is sometimes leading in service, mm-hmm. leading in humility, leading in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Like, what, are you going to be one of them type of leaders? Right. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, my wife was at home for six months. Like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And I'm like, what you mean? You ain't got to do nothing. I pay the bills. You good. Right, She's right, like, right. no, but I just, uh. And I'm like, all right, we'll bet. Then, you know, we want to take some take some college courses? Take some college courses. You want to do photography lessons? Like, that's a part of my job is to, like, help her. So, if she not willing to... It's a, it's a two-way street of sure. both of us yeah. riding for each other. Now, would you say there, because I know you just don't go from zero to 100 when it comes to depression. Yeah. So looking back on oh. it, were there some indicators that you can kind of identify now that you're like, hey, this was early signs that I was getting ready to head in the wrong direction? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. How, does, how does that look? You know, a lot of times, <clears throat> so I, I look at it like this. First of all, you got you to gotta think, too, mental health is a spectrum. So everybody's not going to be as susceptible to, you know, certain levels of mental health as everybody else. It's a spectrum. So some of that is genetic. I got it genetically, like it's in my family history. So just think of it like a glass. And, and on that glass is a paper towel. And on that paper towel is a rubber band. That, that paper towel is sitting on top of that glass. And all the trauma that happens to you in life is just water being flicked on top of that, that paper towel. And what was happening to me was childhood trauma just water flicked on top of that paper towel, you know, stress flicked on top of that paper towel, you know, reaching the top, doing all these things, top of that paper towel, financial stuff, top of that paper towel, marital stuff, top of that paper. Then eventually it's like, oh shoot, it's weak. And one more thing happens, pop, a hole got in it. That was depression. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And now it's like, before the whole thing falls apart, I got to get a blow dryer and that's therapy, that's help, that's friends to like make sure we don't get no more problems. So I would just say, man, manage your stress levels. Um, talk with people, like live integrated. That's the thing that I struggle most with men. Men don't live integrated. We're not integrated creatures and we're supposed to be. Well, what does men, that mean? Men are isolated beings. Oh, okay. We're not integrated. We do not talk with each other about what's really going on. First of all, we don't even hang out with each other unless we doing something together. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, come to the crib. For what? <laughs> <laughs> what we do? What we do? We playing Madden? What's the activity? You know what I mean? mean activity. We playing 2K? What are we right. doing? Are we watching the game? Is the fight on? You bought the fight? Yeah. UFC, you bought the fight? You hear me? It's true, right. bro. It's right. true. So that's what I'm saying. So what I started doing with some of my homies is like, man, is like, yo, we just getting some time together. Like, we just going, like, even I, I don't like camping, but I do it for the solace and the peace and to get some time with my boys. But just like, yo, we're just going to get together. And the whole point of this time is to be integrated. It's like, yo, what's the highs and lows? What's the what's the things that's going on in your life? Once you get to a place, when you really get integrated, you can talk to each other about anything. Like, we're to the place now, we know each other's salary. Yeah, man. We know how much money's in each other's bank account. Yep. And not... And, and why are we so like why are we so private with money anyway? Like what is it? It's, right, it's, right, right, it's, right, it doesn't right. define yeah, when yeah. you feel like it defines you, then you get private with it. When you mm-hmm. feel like this is just Yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah, it is what it stuff is. I got a steward. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Then it doesn't it doesn't define you. So now we we connect it like that. So my boys can be like, yo, have you thought about doing this or doing that? Or, you know, I know you got this, or yo, you, oh, you struggling right now. Okay, bet. I it don't define you, my G, what you need. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where we don't, we take off that mask mm-hmm. and become more integrated. The more, like we're all, most men are lonely. Like 90% of dudes out there are lonely. That's a fact. They're just lonely beings because they don't have friends and they're not integrated and they're scared to 
like build those relationships because it's like i don't want to look like i need nobody i'm good and like, most likely if your homies are rocking with you like they're not rocking with you because of any amount of money you have like nah. your homies actually rock with you yeah. because of the immaterial things that that's you, right that that's you right. possess Absolutely. that's right so that's, if you right. down bad yeah you right they are gonna come like yeah like, yo oh yeah you good yeah. like you yeah. just got an xyz yeah and it's it's not like that but you know i i want to talk to the i want to go into a different direction a bit because we talked about kind of being down a bit and I, I want to talk about being up, mm. right? Let's kind of go to, you know, a brother that's actually experienced some, some excess and, you know, on the other side of things now where he has a woman, he's created a bit of abundance mm. and the, the, the plane called the hand has changed. There's some spades in here now. Right? <laughs> brother, got, brother got some jokers in that joint, right? right? right. So How like, many books you got? <laughs> right, right, right. So like, you know saying? We, go, we ain't got to go blind. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want to talk about oh this God. situation because let's talk to the brother I'm talk, uh, that might have even got to the point where he lost attraction in his lady. Mm. Right, because I was talking about the lady. We we scared of saying things, being vulnerable, and mm -hmm. them thinking the way about us. Mm -hmm. But w let's talk about us losing attraction in our lady. Now, here's the thing: is that normal? Yes. Is it normal over a span of time for you to just not be attracted to your partner? I can't speak for every man on this one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really can't. Hello. I, listen. Hey, what's up? I'm only. I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm gonna let Cray take that call. <laughs> You've never experienced that. I, I've never, dude. How long you been married? I've been married 24 years. You've been, you been attracted to your wife all 24 years. Every. And there's been no stage of our marriage that I have not been like. How do I get to be mm. with this woman? Dang. I'm sorry. Like that. I. I can, only, I, I can only speak for me, but I've been... Even through success, you're seeing these women walk by, blah, 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 it's like, you know. I'm like... So the same level of passion consistently. Yeah, man. Wow. All right, let's stop talking to him, man. Let's talk yeah, about yeah. Him. <laughs> I'm saying, I apologize up front. I'm so sorry. So the reason... The reason I'm, I'm hella attracted to Juliet. Like, like it, has, it has never waned. That's beautiful. N through, uh, through no stage. Nah, I'll take you through my levels. Okay. Like, and, and it's fine because my wife and I... We we talk about this and it's like not like oh I'm revealing crazy right 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 stuff. for sure. Um, my wife is gorgeous. She's an incredibly gorgeous woman. But disclaimer. Yeah, uh, I say we went through different stages. You know, early on, it was that's the homie. We love each other. We want to do everything together. You know, I, I call it the stage of enchantment, mm. right? Nice. Yeah. So we was enchanted. Like mm -hmm. this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is nothing better than this. And then there's like. I don't like the way you chew. Mm. I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, like we can't, we're not even communicating well, you know? So that's the stage of disenchantment. And we went through that for a long time, mm. like some years mm -hmm. where it was like, we're roommates. Mm. I don't like being here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and all my brain kept doing was thinking about what would it be like if we weren't together? And mm. I think, to be honest with you, the reason why we stayed together mm. during that time period on my side of the street was because I was already a public figure and there's too much blowback if I separate. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's wow. like, ah, this is going to be in the public eye. Yeah. This is all kinds of, ah, this is going to be bad. So, so this was already at a place of success when you have these thoughts? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. And, you know, of course, you, you have to now... One thing I did know, and I, I'm grateful for having good friends, and we talked about this all the time, because I got the type of friends where I could be like, hey, shawty just tried to holler at the kid. Yep. Da, 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 da. And one thing I'm grateful for my friends was, I had the type of friends that was like, hey, bro, 80-20, bro. 80-20. The 80-20 principle is basically like, you're only seeing the 20% that you don't have at home, but the 80% that you do is not behind that 20% you looking at. Mm. Facts.com <laughs> forward you know? slash facts. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, she got 20% of what you are missing, but she don't got that 80% that you do have that you're not paying attention to right now because you just mad about the 20% that's not there. 
Mm. So I had them type of friends that kept me sober during that process. But it really took some serious marital counseling for us to just, we had to hash through this stuff. We had to dig and we had to like understand each other. Cause I'm, I'm an artist. I'm romantic. I'm dates yeah, and sure. candy and flowers yeah, 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 and yeah. I'm poetry and I'm I'm the real hopeless romantic. Mm -hmm. I'm a walking cliche. Mm -hmm. I'm every Love Jones loving basketball <laughs> movie. I thought that's what life was about. I'm a cliche. So we go to Paris. I'm thinking I'm killing it. I took you to Paris. We in Paris. You know what I'm saying? Where the accordions at? <laughs> right, you know right, 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 right. Where the modern yeah, 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 yeah. like, I did the ultimate thing. I took her to Paris. Right. You know what I'm saying? We took her to the city alone. The took city her, alone. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flying you to Paris. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, get yeah. to Paris. We on a horse and carriage ride. It's, you know, we out here. I'm like, babe, how you feel? She said, cold it's cold out here all the romantic <laughs> just die i was like you might as well have shot me you know what i'm saying because i'm a cliche i expected it to be like a movie yeah. but she's not the romantic she's a realist mm -hmm. i didn't understand that some people are realists they they're that's not the way they're wired and so for her it was like no i'm genuinely cold like, can I get a jacket? <laughs> it's cold out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's freezing. And you think she complaining? Yeah, I'm like, how you complaining? We in Paris. I get that. We got yeah. into the biggest fight. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? Through counseling, we was able to realize, oh, you're the realist. I'm the romantic. And we have to figure out how to know each other and meet each other and, you know what I'm saying, understand each other. Her nudging toward me is not a poetry or a card or a gift or something. Her nudging toward me is like, I'm about to work on this puzzle. You want to work on it? And I'm like, that's nerdy. Why I want to do a puzzle? You know, but now she's like, oh. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. The right. same way you felt in Paris. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know Absolutely what I mean? right. Yep. So all that to say, we had to learn each other. And now this is the this is the best season our marriage has ever experienced. Like, that's my dog. Like, you couldn't even pay me to look another direction. I'm like, no, thank you. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, tell them whoever. Yeah. You know, clone Beyonce, tell her to try me. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, 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 for sure. I'm good. Yeah, no, that's, you feel that's me? big Like, facts. I'm that's straight. That's so, where we are. So, yeah. that the, I mean, that's, great, that's, that's huge to be able to know how to manage lust, you know, and temptation, especially at the place you in a life where yeah. you could probably have whoever you want at this point. And how, let's talk about this as men, man. Because we taught to hunt, we taught to go get, mm -hmm. we taught that, you know, a lot of what we can get is connected to our skill sets and our manhood. Mm -hmm. So now to retract that mindset, and now to say, I now choose this one woman for the rest of my life. I'm absolutely loyal, faithful. No, I, I don't want to have sex with anybody else. I'm not going to have sex mm -hmm. with anybody else. How do you retrain your brain in this way yep. to like really deal with the lust and temptation at this point? Yeah. What, what does that look I'll like? I'll still be hunting. I'll be hunting every time I walk in the door. Hey, you feel fam. Me? You, I'm like, where is that? That's my kin folk. <laughs> <laughs> that's man. Hey, that, that, that's <laughs> blood right there. Because like, while you was talking, I didn't reel it back in. <laughs> I just refocused it all. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't even pull it back in. Mm. That hunter is still there. Still I there. just hunt this one mm -hmm. every day. If I'm Tom, she's Jerry. Sheesh. So you never catch? Sheesh. I catch her, let her go, catch her again, let it go, <laughs> catch her again. <laughs> Tom and Jerry had how many seasons, dog? Yeah. It never was like, well, Tom finally caught Jerry and ate him. <laughs> right. It's Tom and Henry now. Right? Like no, Tom and Jerry was the same cat chasing the same mouse over and over again. And look, and look, any man can satisfy a woman for a night. It take a special man to satisfy a woman for a lifetime. I don't heard that one Dang before. Boy. I like that one. What? Yeah. You, you built different if you can satisfy her for a lifetime. Mm. It's, it take more work. I can woo you, wine you, and dine you. Tonight oh, and oh, I, I, 48 I, hours. Out. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After saying, 48 hours, I got this. I got you. It's only you gonna trick a little bread and do okay, cool. Yeah. But to keep her attention for life. My wife the other day, uh, because uh, uh last week I spent in in Houston going to the Squire program, like I told y'all about, with yeah. my son Nathan. 
And then we stopped in, uh, we, uh, we stopped at a car charger because uh, I got a Tesla. So we stopped at the car charger. And while we was charging it up, I hit Juliet up. And the phone like went and it automatically picked up. Like it didn't even fully ring. And she was like, I was just stalking you. Mm. She was like, I was looking at where is the dot? Where, uh. is, where is my man? When is he coming home? I said, you were stalking me because you love me. Mm. And she was like, this is exactly like I need you home. Mm. Like, like there, like there is a a woman. You don't need women. Yeah. There is a bad chick in the world who wants to know where I am at all times mm -hmm. and how much time is it gonna be before I'm back in her arms. After 24 years, I still got her doing that. I'm winning. Yeah, you killing it. I'm winning. And I, I don't even, I don't know how these cats from the other countries be having multiple wives and stuff. Like, I couldn't even. I can't That's do a lot it. to manage. That, brother. Man, I got to deal with, like, four monthly cycles. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you lining them all up based on the lunar calendar. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't even know how you would navigate that. It, nah. it, it is, you know, y'all have heard me talk about this. This is my, you know what I mean? This is my third time. I keep coming back to the beauty of monogamy mm. the beauty of having one person know you in a way no one else in the world ever will and i like it even though i had this highly promiscuous background when when i came with juliet i told y'all my biggest regret is that i didn't save myself for her right yeah however what i can say is no one's ever had me. There is no woman that has ever had me emotionally like Juliet has had me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though I wasn't a virgin physically, when I came into my union with Juliet, I was a virgin emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I was still able to give her a piece of me that I've never given another woman. And that level of exclusivity and being able to have that for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. exclusive to her, I can call that girl on the phone, and by my tone, she would know if I've eaten or not. Well, I thought she was going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> like, like literally, oh, I'll no. call her, and 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 she'll be like, "How's everything going?" I'll be like, "Day's good." Da, 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 da. And she'll be like, "You haven't eaten, have you?" Mm. I'm like, "Nah, we got up this morning and started running." Da, 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 da. She was like, "Call me back after you eat." Mm. Off the tone, mm. she knows I'm very short when I don't eat. Yeah. So, so I ain't trying to get used to no new chick, no boo chick, no sugar mama that's like, wh why you, why your tone like that, daddy? I ain't explaining this to you. I I, I'm, I'm, I'm 25 years invested. A quarter of my life yeah. is in one woman and I'm going to give it up for a night with you. I'm, no, that's not happening. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I understand. Like, like we was talking about earlier. You know, I pledged Kappa. I, 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 I ran amok. I did my thing in them streets. I was for the streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice, dog. Mercs me every time. Lecrae got a movie voice that is just on command, and I'm dead this summer. <laughs> Lecrae is hey, for the man. streets. We got to get that sound bite. For the streets. Yeah. I was for the streets. Yep. So I, I understand. I think some of it is a mindset shift too, though, because if you're, if you, if you only see women as either an object or a compliment, like a trophy to add on to you, then yeah, your success is going to look for that. Your success is gonna look for like, yo, I need a new level of objectivity. Who can I objectify at the million dollar mark? Cause I could only take advantage and objectify, you know, uh, these girls in this lounge at this amount of money, but now I got this money. I can I can objectify the girls at the red carpet party. You know what I'm saying? At the Grammy party. So you're still objectifying. It's just a different level of it. Yeah. And then Facts. when you look at yourself and look at women as just like an object to adorn you, like, do you make me look better? Then yeah, you're gonna think that when you get more money. You're gonna mm -hmm. think like, cause that's all they're there for. It's like, yo, yo, I'm flying, you ain't. 
Right. You got to step you up. Right, 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 <laughs> and right. right. I, I'll be honest. When we moved to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? We was young, and my wife got to looking around like, oh, they really doing something out here. Like, he, he just going to Walmart, and the, the wolves is out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So At Walmart. You know what I feel me? Atlanta yeah. was there. So, she, yeah, you know, yeah. it was like, hey, we can have that real talk conversation where it's yeah. like, hey, bet. Don't even sweat it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get it together in these particular areas but that wasn't pressure I'm putting on her. It's just no. her want to be like, all right, I see what's happening. Yeah, I yeah, tell yeah, her. I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. was out there today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Tim is cracking up. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. So, Tim, let me, so, let me, let me well, ask you this, Tim. Because for reference, these guys have both been married for at least at least 15 years. I think 15 yeah. for you, Lecrae, and then how many for you? Tim? 24. 24. Okay, yeah. so it is a group of guys out there that are looking for long-term relationships. They're yeah. hoping to be in those long-term relationships as you guys are. For sure. And right now, they are engaging in uh, serious dating, looking mm -hmm. for the long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. And maybe they haven't found their woman, mm -hmm. and they're thinking, well, in between time for me finding the right woman, I can still kind of dabble in the streets until I find the right one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how important, or is sexual discipline important before you get married? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, practically, I'm going to let you ta answer this. Yeah, for but sure. I'll just say this. There's a practical, and then there's a spiritual. So... I'll say practically there's benefits to abstinence and abstaining, right? But then there's also, what do you subscribe to spiritually? Because if you really believe what you say you believe spiritually, like, like you, you're accountable to that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely correct. Yeah. What, yeah. I, what I would say, because uh, I've, you know, I, I was a young adult pastor for four years, counseled over 4,000 hours. Y you name a situation a young adult could be going through in the dating season. I was I, I was in the throes of it with them, so I understand how to how to help them navigate this. What I realize is that um, most people don't understand the practical side mm. of the discipline and how it impacts your long term relationship if Oof. you're seeking to get married. Boy, now if you're an individual that's never that never wants to be married, you're on this polyamorous type deal, <laughs> and and you you listening to some studies about how we were always meant, you know, men are just wired uh, uh, to have multiple women and society has, is the one that tried to bring us into just having these monogamous relationships, then you're gonna tune me out right now, right? Eat your red pill and tune them out. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you're saying I want exclusivity with one person for the rest of my life, then while you are single and in that dating process, you are training your body on how it's going to respond once you get married. Mm -hmm. If you hold all the way up to I do, don't think those words convinced your body boy, to stay monogamous. Boy. That is not the damn case. Boy. If you hold all the way up to I do, you meant it with your mind, your body going to say, I'm sick of this vagina. Because they hold to the bachelor party. What? <laughs> right, right. They say, I got all of my sisters. Yeah, 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 right. And you did. You, you, you got it out for the first, for the next 18 months before you have the affair with your coworker. You got it out for the first 24 months before you got online and found an escort that you liked because you've been following her IG and she giving everybody head. You like, I want in on that. Mm -hmm. I stay current. <laughs> I'm like, this happened? Right, right. So, so, so what I'm saying is you have to discipline your body while you are single. You abstaining from sex as a single person is actually showing honor to the spouse you haven't even met yet. Because mm. what you're saying is, I believe all things being equal, that we're going to have a rich and fulfilling success, uh, sex life. But in the event that I have to live out the worst part of my vows, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in rich, for richer or for poor, to death do his part. In the event that I have to walk out the worst part of our marriage, I'm already disciplined my body to be able to deal with that. If you fall ill for an extended period of time and you're not even capable of being intimate with me. My body hasn't been so all over the place 
that I won't be able to pull it back in. Because I trained it as a single person, I'll be able to train that in our marriage as well. Mm. When you are having my children and these children are are in your body and making you feel all types of ways and you're fatigued and our sex life goes from like three, four times a week and now it's like maybe once every two weeks, depending on how you feel, I can pull that back in because I disciplined that in me before I even met you. That was my gift to you before you even showed up. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, there, there, this is, there's a practical side to that that is very, very powerful. The spiritual side of that is that if there's no conviction in you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and that's the paradigm we all come from. Other people got other paradigms. This is our paradigm, and we've been unashamed on it. But if you have that spiritual paradigm, you know that your body was purchased. Like, he didn't just, he didn't just like, die on the sin to save your soul, uh, die on the cross to save your soul. He literally purchased your body mm. with his blood. It's no longer yours. Mm-hmm. You don't get to do whatever you want to with it. That's just contextual to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so we have all these affections and we have all this lust and we have all this kind of stuff, but you, you need some nails because mm. you're going to have to crucify it. You're going to have to kill it. So, Ooh. well, okay. So I, I get the, you know, I, I get how you can develop the physical capacity, you know, to, to be monogamous. But I'm gonna tell you a story real quick. So I was dealing with a young lady, mm-hmm. and uh, you know she was she was great, mm-hmm. and uh, she was on, coming to town, flying to town, and she's like got these things going on. She was like, hey, you know, I need to be out there for a week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, a week is a long time. That's what I was thinking. But I agreed to it. Mm-hmm. She came out for a week. The first two days, the first day was great. Second day was great. Third day was was pretty good. Mm-hmm. By the fourth day, he was knocking it down. <laughs> I mean, that's all. We, I mean, that's all we was doing is no, cooking, no. smashing, eating. Uh, it's great. Yep. The fourth day though was like she even started to look different. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Like everything just started changing in my mind to where I'm like, man, I can't believe I agreed to this because it was it wasn't the physical aspect of it. It was like man, she was just in my mind. Like it was like I was fatigued because you know checking on her, making sure she was straight. You know what I mean? Coming home, knowing that even though I had all this going on, I had to give her this level of attention that she needed. Understanding that it was things that I, if I missed the workout in the morning, if I missed doing something, I couldn't just do it. Right. Not, you know, right, right. thinking about, I wanted to call Tyshawn at midnight to yeah, talk yeah. to him about a new <laughs> idea I came up with, but I'm like, I can't go and sneak out and make a call to Tyshawn right yeah, now. Right, it's, it's, right, it's right, right. Midnight. Yeah, so yeah. all these things. Is that Jake was going from State on. Farm? Right, 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 right. <laughs> So mentally, I was so fatigued. <laughs> and then I just started to, you know, so, you know, she ended up leaving or whatever. But I started to think that that next week, just think like, man, can I really live with somebody? Can mm-hmm. I, you know, do I really have the mental capacity and fortitude to have somebody be occupying my mind like that? So my question for you guys is if I, do want to date serious, but of course I don't want to just start living with some these random people. Yeah, you should. You know, <laughs> right, 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 right. I wouldn't. I would advise against right. it. How do, I, right, right. How do I develop the mental capacity to continuously care for somebody and prioritize somebody when I really just kind of want to do what I want to do? Yo, <clears throat> true story. When I had my before I like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna spin a block, but let me. We're gonna let you cook. Yeah. yeah. I got married. Let him cook. I yeah, got we married. need that one too. Yeah. <laughs> got married and had my first son. And um it was it was cool. We used to, me and my wife, we used to stay up. We would watch 24 when 24 was on. We would stay up for 24 hours watching 24. Like it was that type of vibes, right? It was all fun. It was cool. Had my son. And it was like a disruption, like, dang, man, I gotta wake up, feed them. But then that kind of died down and it was like, I don't have to do all these particular things. Then he got to school age and it was like, hey, we gotta get up and take him to school. And I was like, oh yeah, I I remember waking up early like this when he was a baby. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll get up early and take him to school. Day three, day four, day five. I'm like, wait a minute. I started adding it up. I said, oh, I got to do this for the rest of his life. Hmm. And I, I was like, oh, I have to wake up early for the rest of his young life. Mm. This becomes my new normal. And I think that's counting the cost of any relationship is, are you prepared for a new normal? Mm. 
right? Is it worth it? And I think you have to count that cost. So when you get in, when you're thinking about being in a relationship with somebody, you got to realize like, oh, this is, there's a cost to this. Like there's benefits, but there's a cost as well. You know what I mean? And am I willing to sacrifice in order to get the benefit? It's, it's kind of like going to the gym. Like you, there's a, you gonna have to get up. You gonna have to work out for X amount of hours. You got to put in this work. If you want the benefit of the health that you're going to get. That's right. And so same situation is like in a relationship, you got to count the costs. Like, do I want the benefits of having somebody consistent in my life? Um, shared income, potentially somebody who, you know, I, is not my mama when I go to the doctor and say, who can I put on this list that mm. can take care of me? Um, you know, somebody who can feed me chicken noodle soup when I'm sick at home in the bed. Um, you know, all these lists and lists of things going on and on, but they all come with a cost. Mm -hmm. And I think we all got to ask ourselves, like, is that a cost I'm going to pay? I'm not one of those type of people that's like, you must get married. You must be in a relationship. You could be single your whole life. It's yeah, great. For sure. Absolutely. But if you want to be in a committed, monogamous relationship, there's a cost to get them benefits. So. And, oh, no, no, Tim Cook. Go no, ahead. You could. Well, I, I want to say two things based on the scenario you presented. Number one, the first thing I'll say, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, for you to feel like that about her after the end of that seven days, she definitely wasn't the one. Facts. Okay. The other thing I'll say is I don't believe she would have been in your head like that if you wouldn't have been in her body like that. Yikes. Damn. Because when two bodies come together, that's not the only thing that fuses. So you said everything was good day one, day two, day three. But day four, after this, she's in your head in a way that she wasn't. <laughs> prior to you giving her your body. And so I'm telling you, there is a, there, God made sex. So, so it, as much as society has perverted it and tried to sensationalize it, I know, I know the creator of sex. Mm. He made it bomb. He made it beautiful. He made it to be shared between a man and a woman exclusively for the rest of their lives. When you do it outside of that covenant, it still feels good, but the result is not good because of the impact it has on your body, it has on your soul, it has on your mind, it has on your spirit. That girl's in you forever. Pause. Forever. Crazy. Now, with time, she'll be distant. It'll be a distant memory. It won't be as strong as you felt it when y'all was together. Right. But that's, she's in your body forever. Mm. Yeah, one, one, I, I remember um, when I first, like when I had my spiritual transition, it was hard for me to like stop, like, you know, sleeping around. And I'll never forget <clears throat> the, the example that this, this uh, pastor said to me. He said, you know, your body's a temple. And I was like, I don't understand what the heck your body's a temple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Is it a mosque? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but when, when, with further breakdown, it was like, it, he was like, uh, in the ancient days, the temple of God was restricted for the priest. Anybody else who went in that temple would die because they correct. weren't, they're not allowed to be in there. That's correct. And so the only person who had permission to enter that temple was the priest. And so the temple was created specifically for the priest of God to enter and to go in and out. And so he was like, man, these young ladies' bodies are a temple, and you're not the priest of that temple. Ooh. Mm. You don't belong in there. Yeah. And I was like, sheesh. It's like it's, it's disrespectful to God that you are not the priest, but you keep going inside these temples. That's Fire analogy. And I was like, all right. All right. And so it, it did something to me to make me think of it like, oh, this is not just physical intercourse. It's something spiritual happening here that I can't see or understand. And there's implications to it that I'm not grasping. And so, you know, there's consequences for it. You know, I face some consequences for yeah, going yeah, yeah, to for some sure. of them temples. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. I mean? yeah. Absolutely. Thank God for penicillin. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. 
I'm yeah. just saying. It, 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 get, it get real on Harley this year. It's COVID in some of them. Some COVID in there. Right. COVID on there. I want to ask y'all this too because while we started, that's I, fantastic, bro. I kind of, I kind of want to flip this thing upside down from when we started. Okay. Because we talking about this woman, and you know, we we kind of transitioning over to her a bit, and and and, and I want to help the fellas. Yep. Especially that's probably having issues vetting women and even dating women that they don't even like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? A lot of men do that. Oh, yeah. A lot of brothers. Interesting. Just for sex. So, Interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about the recipe for the right woman. Yep. Ooh. Mm. Okay? Ooh. We kind of we put yeah, that, the cookbook yeah. together. Because y'all want the right man. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What is a real woman? <laughs> yeah, right. Y'all want okay? the right man. <laughs> That's not even a phrase we use. Yeah, it's okay? good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I, I want you to, I, I want, I want y'all yeah, to yeah, kind of yeah, break that sure. down for uh, me. That's beautiful. All right. So let me get back to the picture of Genesis chapter number two because this is the blueprint, right? Okay. So you got, you know, from the dust of the earth, uh, he God blows into uh, this thing he shaped, right? This man, he's alive. He gets work. From work becomes responsibility. Now after he's given the responsibility. He's also giving commands. He's giving limitations and boundaries on how he can and cannot operate in order to enjoy paradise for the rest of his life, right? And so he's given what his restrictions are. Everything in here is, is, is for you, right? Except for this one tree. He's also told be fruitful and multiply, right? Replenish, subdue, dominate the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, now you have your marching orders, Character, integrity, responsibility. These are the ingredients of a man. What happens when God makes the woman is he puts that man to sleep. He puts this man to sleep. Um, traditionally, when we read it, we talk about the rib that's taken out of the man. Um, uh, the way most uh, Messianic Jewish rabbis interpret that passage is that God tore that man in half. Yikes. Mm. And from what he tore in half, he formed a woman, right? Damn. And then he presented that woman. Now, this dude ain't half a man. God knows how to make him back whatever he need to be, whatever. <laughs> right. he, he's the architect. I don't get into those complicated areas, right? Right. But, but the, he sleep when he forms this woman. When Adam wakes up, this woman is presented to this man, this one woman. Not 18, not 22, not a body count, not a smorgasbord, not a buffet of like, Felicia, Brenda. There was, I'm just thinking about DMX now, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, okay. So, so he has presented this woman, and this dude is like, this is bone in my bone, this is flesh in my flesh, right? What is this woman to him? This woman is him, outside of him, looking back at him, talking to him about him. He's looking at himself. He gets to see himself outside of himself. So think about the fact that if this woman was inside this man, this woman's taken out, formed, brought back to the man for the man to go where? Back inside this woman. This is where he's complete. Mm. And this is why sex is the fullest picture of God the world will ever see. Because marriage is actually a type and shadow of Christ and his love for the bride. But when a man is inside a woman, that's actually the picture of God. And when it's done in holy matrimony, it is glorious. Mm. When it's outside of holy matrimony, it's inglorious. It's infamous. It's not famous. It's infamous. Mm. It's almost famous, except that it's not because it's illegal, right? Why is porn a billion dollar industry? Because it's a perverted image of the glory of God. Mm. Why do the majority of porn stars, whether they believe in God or not, always say, oh God? It's because it was created by God. Damn. And at the height of that physical sensation and that pleasure, they're still giving glory to God. Mm. He encoded his name in what he created. Sex is his, always has been, always will be. So a woman. I'm just, I, 
I'm keep talking because I, I got to get the porn stars out of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just you're like there was Brenda, Felicia, <laughs> Tana, <laughs> Tina. Make my man have flashbacks. <laughs> I'm well, a visual person. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. I am too. But, but why are they saying no oh God? They're saying no oh God because it's God's. That's crazy. Atheist saying, oh, God, Jesus Christ. Why? It's God's. It's always been his. Nobody says Allah. <laughs> it's God's. Okay? Confucius! <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead, me too, <laughs> <laughs> Buddha! 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 <laughs> no, that's never happened. So, what is a woman to a man? A, a, a woman to a man in a relationship, it's basically this man looking back at him to be the completion of who he is. Not the complement to who he is. The completion. The right Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant, who you recently had on, you told us off camera that he literally said, I feel like I'm operating at 50% as a divorced man. Not married, I feel like I'm operating at 50%. What's happening? This man realizes that in the institution of marriage, he is completed in a way that he is not outside of the institution of marriage. Now, to Cray's point, if you feel if you don't feel the desire to be married, you don't have a high sex drive, you're like, I never thought about it. I don't need to be married. I, I like my singlehood. I'm complete, me and Jesus, whatever. I or or not. I just like being alone. It doesn't mean you're incomplete. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things the church is, just needs to stop. Is like telling single people that basically you're just in this holding pattern until God brings you your spouse because you ain't really worth nothing until you have somebody. That's just not the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is. If you have a desire to be married, you you are you are going to experience another dimension, an aspect of God that you did not experience single. In the same way, uh, people that are married and cannot have children don't experience a dimension, an aspect of God uh -huh. like those that have children do. Right. So there's there's levels to it. It doesn't mean you're missing out. It's just another dimension you get depending on the decision you make to either stay single, get married. Be married, have kids, mm -hmm. if you can have kids or not, right? That's a whole other issue we won't get into. But the woman completes a man in that regard. I don't believe she just compliments him. She completes him, and he completes her. But it doesn't mean that they were that they were th these haves that's been walking around like I can't be complete without you. No, it's a it's a hundred percent man and a hundred percent woman. Who, when coming together and making this decision, new hundred percent. It's a new hundred percent. Mm. It's not even two hundred percent. It's just a new hundred percent. Juliet is me, and I am her. But I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think a lot of. I, I could be wrong, but I don't. I, I feel like a lot of women. You know what I mean. Want. I think uh, you hear a lot of women say, what they require of a man, but at the same time. I don't, I have to push back because I don't know how often I hear men and women dialoguing about like responsibility from a, of the woman's perspective as if there's no responsibility. Cause he just said, Hey, it's two one hundreds coming together. And I think a lot of times now, obviously we know there's expectations from, from women, like ridiculous expectations. But I'm saying if, the, if there was more clarity about, Hey, what do we expect? Mm -hmm. Like, what are we looking for mm -hmm. as far as this relationship is concerned? I think we'd be further along, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Women wouldn't feel as objectified because men are sh are silent mm -hmm. and just th heaping ideals and standards on them without having communication. Yes, yeah, good. And then women being candid and not being like, "Well, there's not enough of them, so I won't say. Mm -hmm. I'll just settle for wow, whatever. Wow." You know what I'm saying? Look, no, Lecrae, like you, that makes that's a good point because for that's, the ladies, right? The lady, if the ladies watch this, mm -hmm. they like, okay, he better have a relationship with God. <laughs> he better have some work and a purpose, mm -hmm. and he better have this criteria, this recipe mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. put together. And she better be able to complete him. You, hey, okay. there's a lot of incomplete women out there. Okay, 
You walking around half of a half. <laughs> <laughs> you over here a third talking about what you bring into the table. I know I just stereotyped a certain type of woman, right? You right. Did. But but and, and you evaluated a man who is connected, has work, can can look at a third of a woman and go, you have nothing to offer me. Mm. Yeah. Except a built in booty. Mm. Yeah. Cause my, like, homie, my I'm not taking that. My homies ain't trash. Like I be hearing women be talking about all these men are trash. I'm like, none of my homies is trash. My yeah. homies is good dudes. Yeah, exactly. Like they're great guys. Yeah, yeah. You, you know still shopping at Walmart. <laughs> you feel me? You, you, I don't know where you shopping. Yeah, at. exactly. You, you, you city you, trends, you, my girl. You're gonna, need, you're, you're gonna need shoes every four months if you, <laughs> you keep getting them saying? from Walmart. Right? Exactly. So, so, so here's the thing: is is it to say that what we require from the woman? is based upon the man vetting the woman. Like, because it seems like the man's requirements are a little bit more fixed mm -hmm. of what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The woman's requirements is based upon what the man's needs. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that am, I, am I picking up what you're putting down? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so let's take it back to Genesis 2 for a moment, right? Okay. When, when, when Eve comes into awareness, what is she aware of first with this man? This man, is connected to his God, and he is working, <laughs> right? right? He is fulfilled in what he is doing. So I'm just completing the part of him that he didn't even know he needed, mm -hmm. right? That's a beautiful thing. I don't know if, now, Juliet took a risk on me because I didn't have a job or a car when I met her. But within five years, I had retired her from her secular job. She never went back to work for nobody except well, herself. I thought you was about to say you found a job after five years. Shout out to Juliet. You <laughs> was, five years, was homeless man. and carless for nah, five years. Nah, 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 nah. Breaking rule number two right After now. five years, <laughs> I figured it out. Then I was yeah. able to I was able to retire her from her from a secular job, and she started like four or five businesses yeah. over the next fifteen years that were successful. You know, yeah. so but she's a completer. Like there's nothing that we don't do. Uh, together, sometimes I run point on things, and she supports. Sometimes she's running point on things, and I support. But that, but she does completely she, complete me. She's not just a compliment to me, like stay on my hip, girl, because I'm going that way. Yeah. No, she's me, and I'm her, and yeah. we are going this way. Yeah. And she has a right to speak up and give input into it, as do I. But there's a completing in that. But I. I am I am connected to God and I am working and I have these values, which ensures for her she feels safe and secure, knowing that those connections are there and she's like I'm here to complete whatever that is. It doesn't mean that it takes away from her if she's a career woman and she's highly ambitious and she's driven to, to have certain goals. There's just there's just communication and collaboration and agreement as the direction we're going is the actual same. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I just finished um, reading uh, The Purpose and Power of Men by uh, Miles Monroe. Okay. Right? Oh. Dr. Miles Monroe. Oh, you are. So, I, you know, actually what you're you saying. You cheat coding. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. You cheat coding that, for that, real, that's a fam. Lot to, uh, why we even having this conversation yeah, right now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And to be honest with you, man, like what you're saying is actually consistent with what he stated too. Because after he goes in, he has very finite, you know, responsibilities yeah. for men. Yeah, yeah. Duties yeah. for men. Yeah. Even call goes as far to call us literally the foundation yeah, yeah, yeah. of society. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And as he when he talks about the woman, he literally says that everything about the woman, her complete design, all of her skill sets, her abilities, her EQ, her emotional state, everything was literally designed for the man. That's exactly right. Little designed to yeah. assist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The man in yeah. executing number two, yeah. which was the purpose and the plan yeah, absolutely. that he needs to go about having. That's exactly right. I will say though, in 2023. That is actually can be a pretty offensive statement. Absolutely, yeah, for, yeah. Sure. for women. Sounds yeah, yeah. like patriarchy. When yeah, you yeah. when you Massage tell a woman, yeah. yes, that she was designed, yeah. in a way that's perfectly, yeah, yeah, perfectly in a way for him, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you really gonna piss some people yeah, yeah. off but when you say but, that. But, but let me say this: most, if I have to take a look around in 2023, I wouldn't want to be designed for none of these niggas either. Excuse me. <laughs> no, no, you ain't got to apologize for that. I want to be for, for you. No, absolutely. You know absolutely, what I'm saying? Like, sure. this is what I'm designed for, y'all trash. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> a woman would not have a problem. That part. A woman wouldn't have a problem. That part. Lining up. That and, part. And, 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 and 
putting her life on the line and saying, I'm committed to this man. If he's the type of individual who's about that life, absolutely, correct. he's leading in humility, leading yeah. in service, cares for my needs, protects me, yeah. looks out for me, makes sure he, like my man said, yo, you don't have to work if you don't want to. He gave her that option. He didn't say, you ain't working no more. No, absolutely not. He said, not. you got the option. If you don't want to work, you don't got to work. Yeah. I, I give my wife the same option. Like, yeah. I want to support you if you do want to do anything, but also at the same time, I want to, this is our traditional society, societal perspective, whatever you want to call it, yeah. but I want to give you that particular option. Now, if I'm out here just on the gram, trying to look fly, Dude. you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, man, I need you to repost me. Like, mm -hmm. that's not what she's made for. <laughs> exactly You know correct. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like most, like, I, you can't be asking women to, 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 it is, it, it is patriarchal and it is misogynistic when sorry dudes are asking good women to compliment them and complete them. That's, mm. that's it's, it is, Incredibly sorry for a dude to be asking his girl to start her OnlyFans page of them having sex, but he's going to wear a hood over his head and she's fully seen for the whole world to view. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> because Tim just knows what's going on in this dark world. That's like, a real yeah. thing. I'm like, yeah, that is a real hey, thing. Tim be on the black, that the, is a the real dark thing. web. Right? <laughs> that is a real just thing. just knows what's going on out here. Here, here. here is my thing. This is no different then what happened in scripture? In scripture, there's a story about the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. She was caught in the act of adultery, mm -hmm. which meant she was caught having sex with a man who was married and or she was married. Yet the only person brought to Jesus is the woman. Mm. They're about to tear her up too. They're about to light her up. What happened to that dude? How come he wasn't brought before Jesus to be stoned? Was this woman by herself? Because if she was by herself, then that's not adultery. That's masturbation. Right. Mm. She would have been caught in the act of masturbation. I don't think you can stone somebody for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. But if she's caught in the act of adultery and she's the only one that made it to Jesus, where's yeah. this man? We're, yeah. all, we're always covering up for the man at the expense of the woman. Mm-hmm. The woman is still unprotected. The woman is still the one that receives the most scrutiny. If a man is out here hoeing, champ, he out here getting it. That's true. If the woman is out here hoeing, whore, she's for the streets. Yes. Slut, she's for the streets. We don't say he's for the streets. We say she's for the streets. That's true. So we still have this woman caught in the act of adultery mentality where we yeah. judge women on a different spectrum than we do men. Yeah. One of the most extravagant gifts we can give men, the one of the most extravagant gifts we can give women is the safety and protection of their bodies. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most extravagant gifts we can give them. Your body is safe with me. Yeah. Mm. And I, I'm all for, like, I understand, like, I've read some books recently on, like, patriarchy and, and womanhood, and I'm all for it. In my house you know, there's just a dynamic that we believe is foundational upon the Bible. If somebody break in a house in the middle of the night, we believe it is my responsibility to get up. Oh yeah, absolutely, red dot. If somebody break in a house at night, I'm not gonna be like, hey, 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 go, 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 go. No. <laughs> <laughs> go get him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's... <laughs> Duty. Crack. Yeah. That's duty. <laughs> yeah. Like, so we consistent. Like, yeah. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, that's, that's, that's beautiful, man. And, and it's crazy because a lot of people are very confused about what we stand for as a platform. Because mm. y'all know it's a lot. First of all, even when we, it's so funny, man. I walk at somebody, but like, what do you do? Yeah, you know, building our media company, we got a podcast. Oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you, you single? Oh, single man with a podcast. <laughs> I already know what y'all doing. Is it? That's, that's first of all. It's always a response. It's like, it's we literally got a like, Oh, oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Red yeah, pills yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And see, so here's the thing. When it's we came hilarious. in, I'm not going to lie, when we first popped, you know, popped off the show, yeah. you know, we was kind of, we thought we was talking to men, first of all. That yeah, was yeah, problem. Because, yeah. you know, when, when, when it's a bunch of guys sitting in the room yeah. and ladies not in the room, Right, right, we right, even right. talk different. Like even when a woman walk in the room, we start talking. Hey, shh, 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 shh. We just Facts. talk different. Yeah. So we was on barbershop talk. We first popped off the show. Oh, yeah. So I can get how women think we stand for a certain thing, but 
the reality of the situation is I truly understand because right now you know we're in the midst of a straight gender war right now. Oh my gosh, like it's, it's brutal. It's, it's getting very ugly. It's brutal in the space of relationships. Oh, it's a lot of it's your fault. It's your fault. People just opting out of marriage. People yeah. opting out of family. Yeah. People saying I want to go overseas. I want to date them. I don't want to get married all together. And everybody is in a major state of fear yep. and protect myself. Yep. And it's a very dangerous place when you think of the longevity right. of a community right. if the mm -hmm. family doesn't right. even really want to be built That's exactly in the right. first place. Absolutely correct. And Absolutely the reality correct. of the situation, even when I'm reading Dr. Miles Monroe, like he really, he literally puts the reality of the situation. Why we even had this episode is because the weight is heavy. It is uh -huh. for men. Like he, he says, we the foundation. That means everything yeah. sits on our yeah, back. That's absolutely correct. So, so, so the, the the reality of the situation, you don't. It might not be sexy to say this, but everything really is our responsibility. It is. And like my man Coach Crump say, it might not be your fault, yeah. but it's your responsibility. Yeah. Dang. The situation that we're in right now, yeah. And how we go about navigating and handling it. Whether we opt out and point a finger, right, or whether we level up, That's man right. up, yeah, and take ownership. and actually become the man That's right. who has the discernment, right. to select the woman to complete him at that. Which, by the way, fellas, weaves out all. Oh my goodness! Which weaves out, by the way, you become that dude. Oh you're yeah, you're not. You're gonna like, like oh, really yeah, be disgusted yeah. with. Yeah, 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 yeah. The with third. the creepy crawlers, yeah, in the, the, the lower yeah. thirds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The lower exactly. thirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, really, yeah, yeah. it's like in our greatness. Yeah. All of this really ends. Yeah, absolutely. And, and see, that, that's that's that's, that's the thing about hype. why, really, just if y'all confused, I hope I cleared up the confusion for y'all. Mm -hmm. Which is why I had y'all brothers on here today yep. really break it down because yep. I'm, I'm, I think y'all probably saved some of some brothers out here. Yep. That's probably knee deep or in the trenches of depression. Mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all yep. testimonies. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Your continued testimonies. Yep. And I appreciate everything that you guys do helping out this platform and doing what we do, man. But now, I, we I have to go to over them tonight, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? Really? Me and all my partner, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my partner them bottles on bottles on bottles. <laughs> all you ladies want to come and get in the section, you better know what it is, man. Ain't nothing but big bottles going on. You feel me? He's crazy. He's crazy. He's a fool. <laughs> Yo, no, li listen, listen. So, because I wanted to ask this real quick, because I know we talked about a lot of purpose at the beginning of the mm -hmm. show. But um, it's somebody out there, some some men that are looking at you, Tim, because you said you've been in youth ministry since you was a, a young one. Yeah, I started right? preaching at 20. Right. Uh, and yeah. then Crazy. Lecrae, you talked about you was rapping when you was in high school. You was a man for, for doing music in, in high school. Mm -hmm. So it's the guys that look at that and be like, hey, they already found their thing. Mm -hmm. oh, they, yeah, they've been able yeah, to yeah. develop their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But me, where I'm at, I yeah. don't have my, my thing, thing yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do how does a man find his purpose? Yeah. Ooh. It's a great question. I, I, one thing I'll say is, man, like we talked about it earlier. It's like, man, stop isolating yourself mm -hmm. because people affirm your gifts mm -hmm. and affirm your capabilities like you know everybody thinks they can do something but but when other people come along and say you need to do that yeah it's like oh yeah oh shoot this is like affirmation this is like but if you isolate yourself yeah number one no one's challenging you to get better at it yep. and number two no you don't hear those voices saying yo this is the direction you really need to go in right you know what i'm saying so i would say man we got to stop isolating ourselves as men like put yourself around other people yeah you can't be afraid to share your dreams to bring people in on your processes yeah. so they can see yep. the work that you putting in and be able to say yo you you got something yeah that's fire yeah you know what i'm saying or Yo, my man, if you tweak this and yep. you did it, or you ever thought about speaking because you, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. You need people to, in order for that to become your reality. And yep. I think a lot of times we waiting for this sign from God. I'm like, right. you know, God use people. That's right. <laughs> you That's know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you can mm. find your lane by putting yourself around people. And then your gifts, like purpose is not about you. Purpose is about you benefiting others. Yep. Mm. So how are you benefiting others? Yeah. When people listen to you, do they laugh? Maybe you funny. Maybe yeah. that's part of your yep. gift to the world. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Do, are they soothed by the sounds you make when yeah. you make music? Are they motivated, inspired when you open up your mouth? Uh, can they function better? Is the sound quality better when you tweak stuff? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, 
Like purpose is not just about what makes you millions. Purpose is about what makes other people better, what makes people around you thrive. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's the only thing I, that I would connect to that is that um, in order for you to find your purpose, you cannot be afraid to fail. Big facts. Failures are findings, right? If they're, they're, I ever they're, took they're, a loss, I learned a lesson. That's it. That's it. Failures are findings. And so sometimes you got to step out into something, fail at it, and then you find out, okay, maybe this is not for me. But at least you don't have any regrets because you put yourself out there. Right. Mm. I remember when I really thought, like, man, I'm going to rap, right? Like, th this is what I'm going to do. I remember, um, the, I think it was the very, f it was the first, yeah, it was the first mega fest that T.D. Jakes did. I was already uh, serving at that church. I had came out with an album. I think I, we pressed up, like, four boxes of CDs, which boxes of CDs, it's a lot of CDs in there, right? So I thought maybe, I think maybe we had like 4,000 CDs, 4,000 or 6,000 CDs. And I'm like, I'm going to Megafest. I'm about to sell out, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm opening up the, I'm opening up the event. I actually wrote the Megafest theme song. I'm like, it's about to pop off, right? I didn't, I didn't get through a box. Wow. And I'm, I'm asking somebody, from the warehouse for a dolly to lug them jokers back on the truck to get them back to Texas. <laughs> My man was outside back for CD for sale, CD. Bro, <laughs> I was about to frisbee them jokers. I was just about to frisbee them down the street. Here's what I realized. I ain't supposed to be doing this, man. Mm. I done tried it all. I'm on the biggest platform. If I couldn't make, if this didn't make you pop off, maybe this ain't for me. Oh, mm. yeah. Okay? Oh, man. So I stopped doing it. What, what, what did God really want me to do with my gift of communication, which I thought I would, I would have preferred it happen through rap. It happened through sermons. Now it happens through conversations on my podcast. Yeah. Guess who opens up the podcast rapping? Me. God, <laughs> the skill set is still there. <laughs> yeah. But I, it, I, you don't have to. Everything that you're passionate about ain't going to work out. That's right. But you will find out what works out by some of the stuff that fails. Every and passion out. ain't your paycheck, man. Every passion ain't your paycheck. That that's what you need to Every write down right there. Every passion ain't your paycheck. And a lot that's of nasty. a lot of men sidebar, a lot of men like you're a 6 at something. You're you're already 30 and you're a 6 at something. You're not going to become a 10 at that. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> You're a six, fam. It's a hard truth to have the teaspoon of hard <laughs> truth. I love this dude. You are a six. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, bro, if you're an eight, maybe a seven and a half. Yeah, yeah. You might be able to work on that and convert yeah. that into a nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. For but sure. bro, you are a six at yeah, 30, yeah, yeah, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it out. <laughs> and you still lacing up your cleats. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. If you bro. 30 and you a solid seven, eight. Be, all right, work on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Work on that. Yeah, you an sure. eight at 30? All right, work on that. You can yeah. get that to a 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh. Yeah, you, if you a six, you... Stop. You might be a seven is, and a half is at the, Is there an age that you expect a brother to have some momentum in his purpose? Again, all purpose ain't paycheck. That's right. So that's relative, man. Yes. Yeah. Because let me tell you who my, who my role model is at this season of my life. Because I pivoted from what was 27 years of preaching that brought me to the point where most guys would have rode out for 30 years, lead pastor of mm -hmm. a thriving church. I pivoted seven years into that to become a podcaster. Unknown territory. No way to parlay church into this audience over here, especially not the way I talk. Mm -hmm. So... um it was a it was a it was a it was a very hard pivot. Here's what I learned and what I appreciated. And here's who my role model was. Samuel L. Jackson. Mm. Mm. Who didn't start acting until his late 30s, early 40s. Right. Where most guys had already been acting in their twenties, late teens, early twenties. I think Lawrence Fishburne was in a movie when he was in his late teens. Yeah. Wow. Right? So so I I I, I hesitate to say. You, you know, if yeah. you don't, if you ain't got it by this time, I, I, I don't think in terms of that. All I say is whatever you're passionate about, don't attach it to financial success yeah, and facts. you'll always be fulfilled. You might have to work at FedEx. You might have to just be the regional manager of a call center from nine to five. Mm -hmm. And then you play your little trumpet at jazz festivals on the weekends. Yeah. Like you ain't going to be Wynton Marcellus. 
Like you know what I'm saying? Right, like right, right. you just you ain't gonna be Dizzy Gillespie. Like you're not gonna be Miles Davis. But you like playing the trumpet, so play your trumpet and get paid. Yeah. What you should not do is leave that job and keep put, throwing God's name in it. God just telling me to do this. No, he not. And just be faithful. <laughs> That's when your wife gonna look at you crazy because she ain't got nothing to complete. Mm. Yeah. That's Damn. a key right there. She got nothing to complete. Yeah. That's a key. That's Stop a lot. asking a woman who who has all the things to complete you to 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 help you with something that's incomplete. Yeah. Mm. She can't do that. Don't ask her to show up for something and it's like well, I'm here but you ain't got nothing for me to do. Mm. Well, I'm working on it. Well, you better work on something else. And also to to, to ladies like don't use don't financial stability is fine, but don't use like financial success as a standard. No. Nope. Stop. Financial you can stability, get popped in the mouth. not success. Because <laughs> if a man is working hard, he's working in his career, let's say you make 120 and he makes 70, and you like, mm, I need a six figure. Yeah. <laughs> like, you bugging. That's a good dude. I bet you he is. You know what I'm saying? And he's consistent. Consistent, doing his thing. Yeah. It's like, don't make financial success the mm -mm. standard no nope. financial stability yes that's, that's different, that's right. different. stability absolutely but not success yeah absolutely. i like that because that woman who's making 120 and she's got this uh this seventy thousand a year man who's doing what he's supposed to do he's investing into his passion yeah a, 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 good, a good one yeah you know yeah. what i mean not yeah. watching tv not slacking yeah. playing yeah, a video sure. game absolutely correct if they get together and he's assuming he's a good man she's a good woman they could triple that quite absolutely that. absolutely right? so i think yeah Boom. and ag and again you're talking about a spectrum right so let's take it to basketball for a moment um you not everybody gonna marry lebron that's right right you might marry tristan thompson Dang. damn damn can we get another kid? Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You might marry JJ Reddick? Nah, okay. You know okay. Okay. okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Solid, solid. Yeah. Wholesome brother. Role, <laughs> player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wholesome. Yeah, wholesome. Role player that can shoot threes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's on a NBA. I want to marry a baller. Uh, JJ Reddick ain't never going to see no LeBron money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's still good money. That's he right. plays in the NBA. That's right. Right? Yeah. So, so. There's a spectrum on that, and you just don't want to put that's all... That's good. You see what I'm saying? That's good. He's balling, babe. And he's, now he's balling in the sports commentating space. Absolutely so correct. So he, he moved it, transition. He moved it. Like, yeah. like let, let this man's life play out. Yeah. Before you... That's what Juliet did with me, and it sounds like mm. your wife did with you. She, she was like, I'm, there's some potential here. Uh, I, I don't think either one of them knew how much was there. But they took a chance, and you got sometimes you got to let some stuff play out. Asking a woman to date down is a lot, though, because they because to be honest, I just don't. Well, and see, but that's the thing. And you saying, see, that's the problem too, right? Because it's this financial difference, and that's called dating down. Yeah, but nothing else right. was considered. No, yeah, right. no, I agree. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, yeah. If, if dating right. down is based on finances. That's incredibly superficial and myopic. Right. Because he might be the most spiritually founded man on the planet. In, absolutely in, in, in correct. In which case, she's dating up. And, absolutely and, correct. And, so. and like, yeah, that's what other aspect. Because my wife, my wife, was a uh, college degree, grew up in a suburban community. Her dad built their house. <laughs> he had multiple properties. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And she's marrying a dude who quit his job at Comcast to rap. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And she's marrying this dude. I move her into a forty thousand dollar house in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So she took a chance, but she saw the character. Yes, she sir. saw the drive. Yep. She saw the commitment. Yep. And she was bought into that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? She was like, "Oh, he built something." You know what she did? She said, "Oh, some of my first shows, she went and sold CDs. She folded up Computer. shirts." On Completer. the front of the, the joint. You Completer. know what I'm saying? She traveled. She made sure, like, the hotel we was checked in. or that Back then, it was like motels. Yep. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. It was on yeah, the struggle. Yeah. But I'm saying, yeah. she she got a whole college degree. Yeah, for sure. Mm. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? But Absolutely. but she saw, like, he's willing to work hard. He's, he's grounded. He's a leader. And she supported that. And now, 
she ain't worked in years. Yeah, absolutely. But did he grow to be T.I. or something? Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you silly fool. You silly. No. no. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a, hey, that's a good one, though. That's yeah, a good yeah. one. I, I think you gave us, you, you gave some templates. You, you do know that was Lecrae, right? That was his story. No, 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 it was, it was a joke. Oh, okay. I was make sure. I'm like, was he? Was that serious? No, it was a joke. It was a joke. Cut that out. Cut that out. All right, bad joke. Bad <laughs> joke. Bad joke. <laughs> I want to listen. listen I, I, the reason I always like when my people come up here and break frameworks down for our people to walk away with, those are my favorite episodes when yeah, I feel like right. they got something to put in their back pocket, they're yeah, going to leave sure. with something. Yeah. And I mean, y'all got a handful. Today, a mouthful today. Yeah, for sure. Man, and man. We talked about whoring and Genesis. We went yeah. like <laughs> full <laughs> spectrum. All in the same conversation. There man. were some whores in Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> 50 chapters. It's all there. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Listen, I, I appreciate y'all, brothers, for coming out here. First of all, Tim flying out. You know, always, man. Yeah, it's always for another opportunity, oh, man. For sure, man. And look, look, the, 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 the native, the Atlanta. You feel me? The Atlanta. And bottles on me, bitch, dog. Yeah. You feel me? We all going to roll today, <laughs> dog. You know what I'm saying? Going up. You better stop playing. Somebody going to show up to go over while you keep playing. <laughs> uh, we going to show up. We going to be a good day. We going to show up. But listen, oh, man, goodness. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all, brothers. Yeah, we love you. Yeah. Love you, man. So um, proud of y'all. Absolutely. Yeah, so proud of y'all. Absolutely. Um, We did this, Um, man, we did this last time. When you was here, and we got to do it again. Let's do it. We got to do it again. I want you to go ahead and, and end us off, Pastor Ross, with a prayer. Yeah, for sure. Close absolutely. this one out. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take it home. Oh, baby. we holding hands, too. We're okay, I see what oh, you did. Right. Right. next level. Yeah, you want to do that last time. Yeah, you want the connection. So, God, thank you so much. Uh, thank you that we, as men, uh, got to speak as men. Mm. Uh, got to be vulnerable as men and be hot as men, honest, open, mm. and transparent. God, I ask that uh, everybody that saw this, both men and women alike, uh, would re receive tools, insight, wisdom, and hopefully some conviction mm -hmm. to make the appropriate changes that allow them to level up. Mm. God, I pray that you would put us back in the dirt mm. until you remind us that we are yours. And for all of our sisters out there, that they would know that they can be safe around men who are connected to God. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And that's how we end in this show here. So y'all got blessed. Y'all got anointed this one here, this show. Make sure you subscribe to Hall Initiated. Please, if you made it this far, you done got some game. Yeah, at least owe us to press that button. <laughs> yeah, at least owe us that. But listen, we love you. We appreciate you. And you already know Harley Initiated. We are out.